Hello, welcome back to my channel. So, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about her anymore. I'll give y'all a second to leave your comments below calling me a hypocrite. That's valid. But honestly, I don't care. <laughs> I obviously have thoughts about the video that she posted like a few days ago. And this is where I share my thoughts. So, plus I've had one of the worst days that I've had in a very long time. And I'm feeling kind of unforgiving. So, I'm going to talk about it. If you don't know Rosalie, I've made two videos about her. And also, you can check out Cyber Noob's video about her to get caught up. Because I can't get into the lore in this video. Because it's a bit of a lot. I'm assuming if you're watching this, you know what's up though. So, Anyway, and also before we get into it, keep in mind that I am a hearing person. I am still learning about the deaf and hard of hearing community myself. Don't take what I say as fact because I am just making assumptions based off of the personal knowledge that I have, but I don't, I don't speak with authority and I don't want to speak over people that know more than me. This is just my thoughts as a hearing person. What we're going to be doing is breaking her video down and talking as we go, starting at like two seconds into the video. She starts off by saying this sign language situation has gotten out of hand. Honestly, that's not wrong, but I find it weird that you use a pretty accusatory tone considering you're the one that allowed it to escalate for months. Keep in mind, she has been posting sign language TikToks since August. She has been posting sign language TikToks for eight months at this point. And if you go onto her page, onto the first TikTok that has sign language in it, there are comments even then that are saying that she's not doing it correctly. And they weren't very aggressive. They weren't insulting to her. The comments that I saw were mostly just saying, hey, please respect this culture. Don't misuse it. I'm noticing that you're doing some things wrong, etc." And that was back in August. She had people in August and September and even October offering her advice and offering her help one of which was Cybernoop, who I'll, I'll get into more later, but Rosalie paints Cybernoop as this villain when that is not the case at all. Point is, yes, it clearly has escalated, but there is eight months of buildup to this. So the way that you talk about it in this video, as if you just posted a video one day and every single person decided to say fuck Rosalie for using sign language, is honestly just manipulative, which is something we see a lot throughout this video. She talks about her clown makeup and how she wears it because it's, you know, helping her and it's comforting for her. That's valid. I truly don't care about that. And then also to go with that, I wore my ears. It's comforting to me. I like my ears. She likes her clown makeup. I don't care. Moving on, the next thing she says is that she only blocked deaf and hard of hearing creators that were spreading misinformation about her and that they were never trying to help her, which is blatantly not true. Here's a screenshot of Cybernoop literally offering to help her. And if you go back more into her older TikToks, you see quite a few comments like that. It's also interesting how she says that people are spreading misinformation, but she doesn't really go into detail or show receipts into what the misinformation is specifically, but she shows receipts for the things that help her paint her side of the narrative. And that's another like manipulative thing I've noticed. Anyway, she then says that she's expressed in the past that she uses signing to help with her anxiety, but people have spread lies by saying she uses it with like malicious intent. And I get doing things to help you with anxiety, but there are some things that can't be used as coping mechanisms and I think that language to an extent is one of them. If you don't know the language enough to where people genuinely can't tell what you're signing, maybe try a different coping mechanism. Like focus on makeup. You said that the clown makeup makes you comfortable so why don't you just like focus on that more? I think it is a bit tricky because obviously anxiety is a very real and valid thing. I have it and some people's coping mechanisms may seem strange to other people, but using other people's cultures and languages as a coping mechanism when it's very clear that you're not well versed enough in that thing just comes off as you not necessarily appropriating, but just using it with bad intention. Like if I were to go onto TikTok and say, hola, soy Grayson, el baño, taquito, that would be obviously very ignorant and it would look like a mockery of the Spanish language. Even though I know what all of those words mean, I'm clearly not using them correctly or in a way that makes sense grammatically to where people can communicate with me. And that's what language is for. Language is for communication. Language is not for coping. Moving on, she then says that people are spreading the lie that she's mocking the community and people are being misled into believing it when it's not what she's doing. And this is just not true. People aren't being misled. They are looking at what deaf people are saying, 
about you and they are looking at the content you put out and they are coming to that conclusion. I don't know why this is such a hard concept for you to understand, but when deaf people are saying that you're not doing something correctly and they can't even tell what you're signing at some points and that you have not corrected yourself after repeatedly being corrected by deaf and hard of hearing people and you are now blocking people for correcting you, it feels like you are making a mockery of that community. And even if you say that you don't have malicious intent, it then starts to feel that way. People are making that assumption because of your own actions, which you still don't seem to get. She uses Cybernoop as an example where Cybernoop do edited Rosalie's video and just corrected her sign language and Cyberdoop said in that video that she was mocking the community. I don't know why she tried to use this to gain sympathy because again it's a video of a deaf person correcting your sign language but also like does this not come across as gaslighting? A deaf creator feels like you are making a mockery of the community because of your actions and you turn it into this whole thing where you're the victim just because you say that you aren't mocking them. Like that's gaslighting, right? <laughs> He wanted to say hi. He's gonna hang out with us. She follows up that screenshot of Cyber Noob's duet by saying, so now you guys got all these people hurt and that wasn't me. So deaf people feel as if you are mocking their community because of your actions and them feeling that way causes them and others to be hurt by your actions. But that isn't your fault. Like, you're not even good at gaslighting. Her next point is that she signed as best as she could and that she never intentionally tried to sign wrong and she never wanted to start drama, which honestly, I believe. But if that's the case, I truly don't understand why you wouldn't just say, hey, I'm sorry, this sign was wrong in this video, I'm still learning, or correct your video in a duet or just remove the video or shit, I don't know, at least make sure that you're marketing yourself as using the language you're claiming to be using. She of course doesn't mention this in the video, but when she first started, she was saying that she was signing ASL, which is American Signed Language, but then if- Not my roommate's dog barking. But then a few months into it, after people caught on to the fact that her signing was weird or incorrect, she then started marketing it as PSE, which is Pigeon Signed English. Weird how she didn't mention that in the video. She then talks about how this has spread so much that now hearing people, hey, are making videos about her, hey, <laughs> and that we're all just reiterating the lies that deaf people are spreading, which is not true. Like she says, she says, it's all bullshit. It's all lies. It's... It's not, dude. You're telling deaf people that their feelings, which are that you are mocking their community, are bullshit lies. Oh my god, is Rosalie a Gaslight Gatekeep girl boss? After that, she plays a bunch of clips of videos from like bigger deaf creators copying Rosalie, dragging her, expressing their frustration with her, etc. And there's like this sad piano in the background. It just comes off so manipulative. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. Receiving hate sucks, right? Like, I'm getting better at dealing with it personally, but there was a period of time, a long period of time, where it really, really got to me and it, it sucks. Like it, it really does. But none of this came out of nowhere. You didn't post one video one day and every single deaf person decided to say, hey, f you. This is months and months of frustration and hurt and anger. And even though I don't condone hate or harassment or any of that, you have to see where they're coming from. That's one of Rosalie's main issues, I think, is that she refuses to see the other side of the argument. She is incapable of admitting that she has ever messed up and does nothing but try to manipulate the situation and try to victimize herself. Like, even me, I can admit, I'm not a 100% hero in this whole thing. Like, my first video about Rosalie sucks. It's honestly a really bad, really sloppy video. And going even further than that, like I can say that harassing her and telling her to kill herself is entirely wrong. But Rosalie can't admit that she's in the wrong as well, honestly, more than anyone else involved. And that's why she will never learn and why she's now trying to manipulate what little audience that she has left into believing that she's the victim in this whole situation. This is a minor point in the video, but after that, she talks about how like people were making TikToks in her makeup, like copying her. Someone tell Rosalie she did not invent clowns. I'm pretty sure that was a Vani. Next is where she talks about how people are just pushing this false narrative that she's faking sign language, but in reality, 
she has so, so many comments on her videos telling her that she's actually doing it right. And she then shows screenshots of her comments of people saying that it's right. And here's the thing about that. I don't doubt that she's done some signs right. Like it, it would be genuinely impressive if she was signing nonsense from the start. But the way she says that there are so many comments is, is really heavily exaggerated. Go try and find those comments in her videos. I'm not saying they're not there, but she made it seem like there were a lot more than there really are. Another thing I find interesting about this point is that almost every single person she shows in those screenshots she's friends with, like TikTok will show you, like being friends with someone on TikTok just means that you follow each other and it'll have a little thing that says friends next to their name. And I'm not saying that that means they're lying, but there is a possibility of there being a bias there. And then it also goes back into what I said earlier about her only showing screenshots when it benefits her. Anyways, after that, that is where she says that she's happy to learn and that she's added deaf creators on Snapchat and Instagram that were nice and tried to help her. And she doesn't show proof of that for some reason. So personally, I do find it hard to believe. You can believe her. That's just my personal belief. <laughs> in my notes, <laughs> I, I was taking notes as I went and in my notes, it just says, holy shit, I'm only halfway through the video, by the way. <laughs> Alrighty, we might be here for a while. Her next section is where she talks about how she's not perfect and that she's a human being and how everyone criticizing her was really affecting her mental health. And honestly, that's valid. Like I can understand her getting anxiety around posting because of the attention she's getting. And when I say this, I don't mean this to be mean. I mean it genuinely. If your mental health was affected, don't post. You've had eight months to stop posting this content that was harmful to you. And that's not me saying that to like doubt that she actually feels that way. I think that this is one of the most honest points in her video. But if it is harming you, stop posting that content. Like literally she could have gotten away with not addressing it. Like she could have stopped posting the sign language videos and posted other stuff like her makeup or her eating. Yeah, she, she did that for a while, like posting videos of her eating food for people that have struggles eating. And those videos were actually really successful in terms of views and likes. And it honestly seemed like content she enjoyed making. So really like she could have just kept doing that and never said anything about the whole sign language thing and just waited for people to stop talking about her. Her next point is that other hearing people that post sign language videos have gotten the same backlash or harassment as Rosalie has and she doesn't give examples of this yet again. So I can't confirm or deny that. But if you're saying that they are just like you, then that's probably pointing to the fact that it's not unjustifiable criticism, you know? Like Rosalie tries to paint this whole narrative that deaf people are gatekeepy and bully any non-deaf person that tries to use the language. And that's just like not true. There are tons of hearing creators that use sign language in their TikToks and they don't get the backlash that Rosalie gets. It's almost like when you do something correctly or you at least own up to your mistakes, there's not an issue. Moving on, she says that people that are making posts towards her or about her are just doing it for attention and not to help her. And while that may be true for some people, that's a pretty baseless assumption to make about every single person. Like she says, if people really wanted to help her, then they would message her privately. But just because someone doesn't message you privately doesn't mean that they have bad intentions. TikTok's DMing system is weird as is. Like I have my DMs set to receive them from everyone and yet I don't. Some people's DMs don't work entirely and even Instagram has like weird bugs in their notifications. But even like besides all that, just straight up making a video about someone is the easiest way to get their attention, not DMing them, especially if that someone has hundreds of thousands of followers like Rosalie has. There's an incredibly high chance that your DM is never even seen just because of the amount of requests that that person gets. And that person isn't going to get a notification for every single message request. So honestly, there's a chance that you message Rosalie Rosalie genuinely didn't see it, you then make a video addressing it because public videos are the easiest way to get a response from someone. As we've seen from like this whole thing. The point is saying that someone only made a video about you for attention is dumb, moving on. She ends the video by showing a bunch of vile messages that she's gotten and straight up, that is not okay. As I said in my last video about Rosalie, there's a difference between criticism and hate. You can dislike her and her actions, but don't tell her to kill herself. It helps nothing, it proves nothing, and it's gross. But that was really her video. It it was honestly 
manipulative from start to finish. Like even, even the title and the thumbnail, like the title is why I had to quit sign language. That begins to paint her as the victim before she even tells the story. She also doesn't mention any of the other things that she's been critiqued for, like her use of the flashing lights in the backgrounds, her lack of captions, her excessive movement that makes it hard for people to read her hands, etc. Assumably because it would, oh my god, are you struggling? Do you want to get down? Assumably because it would make her not look like the victim. She also didn't give any like exposition before getting into her side of the story, which honestly feels kind of purposeful because I feel like if people knew her background more, they would be less sympathetic towards her. Like this could very well reach people that have no idea who she is and they just see why I had to quit sign language and they then fall for it and they then feel bad for her without knowing that this has been happening for months and months and months. Another thing that makes me think that this is a manipulation tactic is the fact that she made a whole ass diss track like two months ago. <laughs> to me, the juxtaposition between this diss track on everyone hating her versus this video where she's essentially saying, woe is me, looks like she tried to get people on her side by going for like the I don't give a fuck approach, fuck the haters, eh, you know, and then when that very obviously backfired, she's now trying this method and it's still not working. That's really all I have to say about it though. I'm not gonna say that I'm done talking about Rosalie like I did in the last video because obviously here we are. I had thoughts on this and I wanted to say them. I'm not even sorry about it. If I have to make a video about her in the future, I will. It depends on if she continues this shit and if I continue to have thoughts about it. So but yeah, that was this video. Thank you so much for watching. Oh my god, I totally forgot to mention this. Follow me on Twitch. I just got approved to be a Twitch affiliate and I stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, but yeah, that's really it. Like and subscribe if you're new here and comment for engagement because it really helps me out and I would very much appreciate it. And I'm going to go cry in the shower. Say goodbye to Oscar. Handsome boy. Okay, bye.